kiss for you. Alright, today it's a bonus video on some useful tips that you can use if you're trying to troubleshoot and fix your computer. So the first thing, the very uh, one that kind of started all this was I was having some issue with my Wi-Fi chip. Uh, in my computer, I got a new computer, got some new Wi-Fi set up, uh, and it was working fine with the old one. The new one I noticed uh, via the speed test system that I was getting you know, pretty low results and I should have you know been having way higher results than I was actually getting and that felt kind of weird so I you know looked into it and I was getting and this was on you know August 26 I was getting 52 uh, megabytes per second download and 120 upload now we should be getting fiber optic right around 800 up 800 down we were not getting fiber optic it was supposed to be that way it wasn't and I was like huh that feels kind of weird I remember having the same issue before with my old computer. Now the old computer was a 2017 one. So I was like, oh, it has a, you know, laptop grade Wi-Fi in it. It's not that good. Uh, and so it's probably just a disconnect between that because I was doing it on my phone as well. And my phone was fine. So I was like, oh, it might just be that. However, this is a new computer with new Wi-Fi that is not laptop grade crap. And so it should be working fine. And so I tried to look up uh, based on the Wi-Fi chip model I had and any information and I couldn't find anything until I found this one Reddit thread here talking about slow Wi-Fi speeds on the a uh, AX211 Intel Wi-Fi card. I couldn't find anything about it. And then there's one comment here that suggests using NetShell, TCP, set global auto tuning to normal as well as the NetShell Winsock reset. Using both of these commands into the admin run command prompt right here will give you the results you're looking for. So you can just copy that from the link you provided, you can paste it, uh, run it as well as this one, you can copy it and then paste it in there, right? Uh, and then you just have to restart your computer and you'll be all set. When I did that, I ended up getting, as you can see, 590 megabytes download and 930 upload. So that was obviously a really big difference for me between doing those two things. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, or maybe it only increased it a little bit, the other thing you can do is check your drivers, make sure they're updated. Uh, and you do that by downloading, uh, what is it called? The Intel Driver and Support Assistant. I will leave a link to that below as well. Uh, you can just type in driver and support assistant right here. Uh, you download it, right? And it basically pops up a window and says, hey, you should download some drivers. You'll click install and it will install it for you. That is a pretty good kind of uh, setup there to determine if your drivers are sort of out of date because you can try and do it the normal way through the uh, control panel or the device manager and it will say they're up to date. But in this case, it was like a week old driver that hadn't gone through the system yet. So I was able to update it like that. I don't believe for me this affected anything, but if you do the uh, two commands here in the command terminal and you don't find anything, then obviously you're going to want to update the drivers and see if that fixes it. Uh, I don't think you need a restart after that, but it's probably just a good idea just in case. But, you know, do that and check your speed and you should be getting much higher speeds. This can be for anything. If you're noticing slowdown or lag in games or anything like that, then you can definitely check that out. So that's the first tip. The second tip here, uh, turn off your antivirus. Now, I'm not suggesting you you know, make your computer vulnerable or anything. But a lot of the time, what happens is if you're running something like Malwarebytes or McAfee or anything like that, your Windows security system here uh, kind of disables a, a variety of things. If you have McAfee installed or, or Norton or any of these other antivirus programs, uh, they're gonna take priority over your security here. So what you wanna do is make sure that these are off if you are using McAfee and wanna continue using McAfee. If you don't and you wanna kinda disable it and remove it, then you have to remember to enable this back on because just because you uninstall McAfee does not mean that your uh, Windows security is gonna be back on. A lot of the time what happens is you don't use McAfee or you don't use uh, another antivirus and you forget to turn the antivirus you have here back on. So you wanna go here obviously and you can do a quick scan but there'll be an on button like right here. Say, hey, turn it on, right? And you can do that for any of these. So right now I'm not running any anything other than Malwarebytes which isn't actually like on at the moment. It's kind of just like if it's on, it'll be in the background here, but it's not on currently. Uh, so as you can see, I kind of just use that to, to scan things. I don't really use it as a, like an ongoing system. But if I did, obviously this virus and threat protection will probably have an X next to it because I'm using uh, malware bytes. However, right now I'm not using anything. So I do make sure that all these are checked. Uh, I did notice that a while when using something like the HP that had McAfee pre-installed. A lot of the time it would give me a warning saying that this was not 
checked. I kind of ignored that originally. Definitely don't do that, whether you're using an antivirus or not. Make sure that this is, uh, is checked if you're not using an antivirus. Third step, and this is more for a convenience feature that I think I really enjoy, make sure that you download WinTree. Now, Win WizTree, sorry. WizTree is a free application. You can download here. And it is basically just the easiest way to look at your file structure. So you may ask, what's that? Well, anytime you have a lot of files, right? Like I do, anytime you have a lot of storage in a variety of different places, uh, it becomes quite difficult to kind of find things, right? If I try and go on an external drive, I have a lot of things here that are kind of hard to determine. So if I was trying to look, hey, what's taking up the most space in my uh, Windows C folder, right? I, you know, 500 gigs, most of it's being taken up. Let's see what's being used there. So if I were to do that normally, uh, right? Like all this stuff you have, you have to kind of figure out like, okay, I gotta go to users, my name, can, you know, maybe sort by, is there a sort by size? There's a sort by size, right? It's not that useful because all of a sudden it says the, the largest file size is 18 megabytes. And that's not correct, right? We know that's not correct. And so these kind of sorting things don't really work. And so instead, what you're gonna to wanna to do is download something WizTree. You open it up, it has here, and you can say, hey, I wanna scan my Windows drive. And in about five seconds, depending on, you know, if it's a hard drive or SATA or a uh, NVMe SSD, uh, by the way, if you don't know what those terms are, don't worry. I have an entire video on computer basics. You can go check out, uh, link should be in the description. So if you wanna uh, refresher on what these terms mean, then you can check that video out. So you can see right here, I uh, wish tree and you'll get this sort of setup, right? You'll have the folders, you'll have the size that they take up and a couple other bits of information. So as you can see, the users folder right here and this mp 3 folder has 185 gigs of space that's being used, right? And if I look up what takes up the most space, uh, we see videos take up the most space, right? And then app data. What you'll notice is if we go back to where we were before, right, with users and MVP3, and we try and sort once again by size, and we go ascending, you don't see that. And we can go descending, right, just to check. You do not see app data showing, like right now, I can hover over it says 20 gigs for app data, right? However, it shows other things higher than that, which is obviously ridiculous because like Ansel, for example, is not bigger than 20 gigs. And we have other things here that are obviously empty and smaller, but it would ideally show you that app data is at the top here and it just doesn't. This one does. It's gonna show you that, hey, video is taking up a lot of space, but app data is also taking up a decent amount of space and that's under mostly local stuff. So I can't really get anything there. Uh, and it's gonna categorize other things that might be harder to figure out like how much your iCloud drive is taking up, right? or how much documents is taking up. Uh, and so you can just basically use these little things here and scroll down. Right now, obviously the main thing I'm taking up a space wise on this drive is my uh, videos right here, right? And, and all that, especially for my gaming channel that you should all check out. And then if you want to switch drive, you just say select. I want to do my crucial drive, pops up immediately and you're able to see that. Now, uh, you might be wondering what this stuff at the bottom is. Well, you can click on something, let's say Steam library and it will highlight all the things that are taken up by the Steam library. Uh, and you can kind of go into it even more. So Steam library, Steam apps, common, right? Uh, let's just take something Street Fighter 6. It will highlight this orange chunk here is Street Fighter 6. If I go like a Dragon 8, this chunk here is like a Dragon 8. And so you can you know, decide to explore the folder or open uh, a variety of commands here could mess something up. So ideally you just want to like delete, copy, cut, uh, that kind of thing explore folder open, right? And so that just is a really easy way to kind of get this information that you might not otherwise get. Obviously it's free, there's no ads or anything like that. So however, I think that's a pretty uh, useful item, at least uh, for me. So the fourth tip I wanna talk about is you want to turn off startup apps from the task manager. A lot of people that I know have a lot of apps that shouldn't be on startup and don't know how to stop it. Startup, so right click task manager, startup here, and you'll see obviously all the apps on startup. And a lot of apps, a lot of people have stuff like their antivirus that start up, uh, Spotify that starts up if they game, have any gaming things, right? Discord or Zoom or Microsoft Teams or anything like that. Having it be uh, a startup. Other things, Microsoft Edge for me automatically starts up and automatically opens. iCloud and iCloud photos automatically start. And so if you wanna, for example, disable Edge, you're gonna click on it, right click and hit disable. Pretty simple and that will disable it. Uh, the static startup impact, 
is usually just how long it takes for those things to start up. This is also gonna be dependent on whatever you're running. If you're running a hard drive or an SSD, again, check the video on uh, hard hardware basics to understand more about that. But that's gonna also uh, affect your uh, startup speed. So if you're seeing that when you start up your computer from a shutdown, if it's slow, you can check the startup apps here, or you can also determine if you maybe need an upgrade or if your hard drive is really old, then that could also be slowing down your, your startup there. So yeah, just, I see a lot of people having these and not really changing them. And so that's how you change them and, and kind of maybe you can improve the feeling of turning on your computer and not have a bunch of stuff open, right? So the final tip is another command tip. And this simply is going to check for, this kind of last tip is, is more uh, diagnostics based, right? So for example, if you do feel like there's something on your computer that's slowing it down and you kind of feel a little, you know, like, ah, why is it taking so long to do that? You can always check your hard drive by right clicking it and going to properties and then go into tools at the top here and then doing the error checking. If you check for errors and it finds something, it'll try and correct it. Uh, this could be uh, a hard drive or an SSD failing to find a certain packet. Uh, that basically just means it, it's trying to find a specific thing and it's going to keep spinning around or, or trying to bit, uh, you know, move bits and stuff in order to find it. And if it can't find it, it's just going to effectively spin until it decides to, you know, give up and go back to the start, right? And so that could take a while. And so checking for that error tries to fix it, right? This is also going to fix things like any packet loss, stability problems, all that stuff. So make sure you check that. Uh, and have it run through its course there to check just the quality of that. Now, after you do that and you find out everything's fine, the other thing you wanna do is go into the command prompt here, right? Command prompt, I'm just gonna run as admin just to be safe. And you want to do SFC space slash scan now. Just like that. And you'll hit enter and this command basically scans uh, securely uh, all the things and repairs any corrupted files that you might have. Uh, you can get corrupted files a number of ways. A Windows update corrupts something. Uh, a driver for something you have plugged in, like a mouse or headphones or whatever, uh, is out of date. And so it accidentally, you know, tries to update uh, and, and it can't, or maybe you're on an old version of Windows or something, right? And this is basically just try and fix all that. You will run it, it'll be fine. It'll try and fix any corrupted files and replace them with anything that's currently stored in the cache. Uh, the other thing is check disk. C-H-K in all caps. DSK in all caps space uh, slash F or slash R, which will check and the R will replace or repair anything on the disk. That's another way to check the disk uh, because a lot of the time, a lot of these issues are going to be uh, hardware based. So those are the five tips that I had. Hopefully they're uh, relatively useful and kind of help you with a variety of things you're dealing with. If you want to see more of this kind of content, I do have a playlist that's called topic videos now. So if you're interested in things like how to find, uh, pick out the right mouse or the right TV or, you know, laptop specs and all that, or what the display type differences are, as well as other larger things like computer basics guide or anything like that. You can check the topics video in the playlist. Thank you for watching and I'll see everyone next week.